Good morning. Good morning. My microphone is slowly falling. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Happy Friday. We've made it to Friday. Um, hi, Becca. Hi, Mom. Hi, Esteban. Hi, David Perry. Andy. Amar. Kyle. Luther. Cloudy Mind. Suhant. What's up, dude? Alan Miller. Kyle Ash. Hello, everyone from Discord. Hello, everyone from my stream. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I know that it's not the morning for everybody because we have an entire earth, um, but good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, good night. Ken, are there any other sort of old English phrases that have been phased out that people used to say back in the day? Like aside from like, you know, top of the morning to you. What, what, <laughs> is, there, is there a phrase that I'm missing here? <laughs> well, you know, from New York, it's kind of like, well, what's it to you, right? <laughs> you good? <laughs> yeah, 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 you good? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I feel like they're- I, I'm, I'm kind of in the vibe a little bit because we spent the week in, in we New sure York did. last week. So that hasn't quite rubbed off. And, and yeah. fun fact, you are from- New York. New York area, yeah. I was brought, well, born and raised on Long Island, yeah. Well, that is New York. Yeah, it's New York. When, okay, when I, when I say New York, what comes to your mind? Manhattan. See, I'm glad I'm not the only one that thinks that. And then there's like the entire, like when you, when you put on Google Maps New York, New York is gigantic, the yeah. state of New York. But I feel like sort of globally when, when, when I say New York, it's like you think of the tall buildings. I think you of think the of, city, I think of Manhattan. You think of the city. Yeah. You don't think of the other boroughs that make up New York City. You think of the yeah. island of Manhattan. Of course, the funny thing, right, is that people who are, like, physically in Brooklyn and Queens, like, on Friday, you say, oh, well, what are you going to do for the weekend? It's like, oh, I'm going to go out on the island. It's like... You are on Long Island. Brooklyn and Queens are on Long Island. Yes. They are, actually. Yes. But it's just not like the headspace is the, the totally new, different. I will, like this is go. this is a, you know, it's, I, here, I'll, I'll turn it to the stream. When I say New York, what do you think of? You think of the city? I grew up in the Bronx and think of Manhattan as NYC and everything else is just everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, but wait, Ken, is there is there another phrase that I that I'm I feel like there is or maybe there's not good morning good evening good afternoon good night that's it there's <laughs> there's 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 nothing else out there what do you what do you say what do you say to somebody <laughs> if you're walking through the a airport at four in the morning what do you say good morning good morning yeah Wait, at what point does it change from a good good evening good night because good night seems feels like a like a like a sort of dismissive like good night see good you night. later yeah, versus I, like oh I'm good not morning see you, yes uh, yeah i'm not going to see yes. you anymore that day yeah Right. Anyway, I don't know why I'm on this. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know why either. <laughs> I'm glad you know. Hey, we're getting to the bottom of these important matters. That's right. So right at the right That's at the right. top of the stream. I never say good morning no. to you. No. Good morning, Colin. <laughs> now, now, if I were so to say, if yeah. it, wow, if I now, if I were to say, it, it still feels like yeah. Good morning. It's like hi. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, good evening. But then you don't say. Good night. You say good night. Okay, I'm done with this. Hi, Ken. <laughs> Hi. Uh, welcome Hi, back Sam. to the Thank stream. You. Thank you so much. Um, Great to be here. This is this is the one and only Ken Kashenda. Um, you were one of the first people that we had on the stream back in the day. And fun fact, I don't think you've been on the stream this entire calendar year, hmm. uh, which is pretty. It's crazy how fast time is moving. Yeah. I've been at Humane for six months now here yeah, in San Francisco, which is crazy. Colin's been here for eight weeks now, which is also just you're finishing your eighth week now, which is just literally insane. Um, wow, I've been saying his name wrong. Whose name? All right, I'm going to – this is Ken's third time on the live streams. Well, there you go. Okay, um, I'm going to – Manhattan only. Hey, Imran. Mom, thanks for chiming in. Um yeah, maybe we'll have, I feel like we haven't done, I don't think I've done an Imran version of this. There was sort of like this, Definitely. you know, the first stream was I just planted down a camera and sort of, but um, okay, I'm going to close my laptop. Um, talk to me, Ken. How you doing? How was the drive-in this morning? 
Oh, the drive was great. Yeah. There was probably no traffic this um, morning, huh? So we were you know, here at the office a little bit late last night, so it was a little bit bleary-eyed, kind of, you know, trying to keep the car in the road. <laughs> oh, and whatever. God. But, you know, just, and you know. your car has no autonomous features. Uh, no. You, in fact, uh, need a hand on I the... Need, on I, the... Need to, I need to, yeah, work the, work the shift. How often? I, 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 I've never... I've tried to drive stick one time... Shout out my roommate, Ben Locke, in our tiny little parking lot in the back of our apartment cl complex. I've tried to drive stick once. Do you need to have a hand on the gearbox most of the time, or you have two hands on the steering oh, wheel? Oh, I like to keep two hands on the steering wheel as okay. much as I can. It's just to, you know, then shift. But I guess when you're on the highway, you're not shifting gears not, as much as when you're so launching much. off of a... Right. Okay. Yeah, I okay. mean, kind of pick a gear. The the gear the the gearing in uh, my car is pretty tall. So what does that mean? Well, it just means that you can rev out a gear for kind of long. Uh, that in in that like second gear, I can be going. 70 miles an hour in second gear. But it's screaming. It's screaming, yeah. It goes to 9,000. So. What car is this for? It's uh, a 2018 uh, Porsche 911 GT3 Touring. It's a nice car. Sounds nice. It's, it's, it's very nice. Um, yeah. Ken, can we share uh, why, <laughs> why exactly you have that car instead of the car that you had previously? Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. So uh, so the, the, the car that I have now. So I, I, I've had a succession of cars. I'm a bit fickle when it comes to cars, try to be a little bit more stable in most other parts of my life, but I've been through a bunch, you know. So well, what does that mean? Paint us a picture here, Ken. Um, yeah, so so um, starting from around 10 years ago, I've had a bunch of cars. This is my fourth Porsche. I've had two Ferraris. Uh, I had a McLaren. Um <laughs> And um, uh, Mercedes AMG, Oof. Uh, GTC. That was wow. that was nice. And then, but most recently, before this 911, I had a Mazda Miata. And um, is that a two seater? It's a two seater. It's very very nice. It's got a convertible hard top, which is the only one of those I've ever had. Um, it's it's a it's a really nice car. It's small. It's agile. And uh, we uh, had an event for Humane over in Golden Gate Park in SF. I'll point over in the direction of Golden Gate Park. For, for those of you tuning in, it's over there. <laughs> that way. Um, yeah. This was back in November, November, I think. Yep. Yeah. And so we were having uh, an event out at Golden Gate Park. And uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, you, you, we wound up, I wound up driving you over there. And we started talking about cars a little bit. And I, I was... <laughs> in that moment that I was like, yeah, I need to get a different car. I <laughs> well, like, I think we saw a Porsche yeah. on the way there. And I think we dove into the history of your cars. Um, not saying I'm the reason why you have this yeah, Porsche, totally but, totally, totally, totally but you very totally. quickly went down this rabbit hole yeah. of, um, now, now I, I, I want to ask, did you, did you have, how did you decide on that specific model of Porsche was that something you wanted you saw yeah, when it, when it well, was announced see, and I, I drive my car every day to work because I live in Mill Valley uh, so over the Golden Gate Bridge uh, just north of San Francisco so I drive from Mill Valley to SF every day and then home in the evening naturally so I have a commute and uh, you know I park uh, over by the Moscone Center uh, uh, every day and so I, I need to have a car that I can park in a public garage. And so what does like that, what does that mean exactly? Yeah. Ferrari, <laughs> like is not the car because it just draws too much attention. Yeah. I mean, I feel yeah. like you just wind up getting the thing keyed or broken into mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this car it's, flies under the radar a little bit. It's a, it's a, a 911 GT3, but it doesn't have a wing. Uh, so is it a convertible? It, it, no, it's a hard top. Now, was that a deliberate choice? Would you have opted for a hardtop convertible? Well, you know, the three characteristics in a car that I like the most are uh, stick shift, so manual transmission, naturally aspirated engine. Turbo, turbo uh, charged engines have gotten a lot more responsive in the last 10 years or so. It used to be that you sort of put your foot down on the accelerator and then there's turbo lag mm -hmm. uh, because the way a turbo charged engine works is it uses the exhaust gases to spin a turbine 
which then sucks more air into the engine. And if there's more air in the engine, you can burn more fuel, and that's how the... Wow, so that's what a turbo is? That's what a turbo is, It's yeah. just an extra spinning turbine. It uses the, 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 the exhaust gases to spin a turbine, which then can be used to create suction to pull more air in the engine on the intake mm. side. So the thing is, until, I mean, traditionally, I mean, there's all been all sorts of technical solutions coming along for this. Uh, but traditionally, uh, the, you know, uh, the, you'd need to wait for exhaust gas pressure to build up so that the turbo uh, turbine can spin up so that you can uh, bring more air into the engine. So there's this a, a phenomenon called turbo lag at low RPMs. So you put your foot down on the accelerator and there's a delay before the thing just, you know, does its sort of millennium. And your car does not have that lag. Uh, it doesn't because it's a natu naturally aspirated engine. It doesn't have a tr turbocharger or a supercharger. So it just is using, it's just at at atmospheric. It's and just using the, you know, the pressure, you know, the air pressure coming from the, you know, the ambient air. Those three qualifications... Oh, so so uh, um, uh, a manual transmission, naturally aspirated engine, and a convertible top. So those are my three things that I like in a car. Does this Porsche come in a variant with a hardtop? Not a GT3. Dang there are it. all sorts of. I mean, if you go to the Porsche website, there's all sorts of variants. There's like a whole that. matrix of oh configurations my gosh, a you huge, can do. Huge, huge matrix. Yeah. Nine Elevens. But um, it's you know I I it's it's a it's a, a good good car for me because it's it's fast but it's not like too flashy yeah not a screaming i mean look at me I was, you know here i am in my denim leisure suit today i mean it's not, not exactly a flash, flashy flashy you call that a canadian tuxedo yeah, a canadian i tuxedo. think right it's it's like this um um this is a jacket that uh my dad bought in the 1970s so wow it's a real actual vintage piece and wow. um so unfortunately he's what would you anymore, what so. would you uh quantify as vintage in 2023 can <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good because if you ask the 70s i think when it comes to clothing 70s, 70s. Is, uh, yeah, is, is there's there are there's definitely how many, a, how many people out there is like can actually remember the 70s that are watching this live stream? Uh, the my mother um yeah. when 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 i watch social media content and i see these you know, young 20 year olds that are, oh, vintage 90s. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Remember these, remember these CDs, these discs? Fun fact vinyl sales hit a record number it's in crazy. 2022. It's crazy. What, what is it with the human race and nostalgia? Wow, is is it is it programmed into our brains to yearn for the past? Uh, everybody wants the thing that they can't have. But we had it already. <laughs> we had it for so long and no one gave a damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it's it's a funny thing. Vinyl is really funny. I mean, I... Do you have a vinyl player at home? Record player? I don't. I, get, I had a nice record collection. I gave it all away. It's like a long time ago, I gave it all away. I sold it at a garage sale or some, you know, some, something like that. I just have no desire to go back to it. I, I don't. I don't understand. I mean, people <laughs> say that they can hear the difference. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. Really? Really? Colin, you want to chime in here, Mr. Audio? Uh, the hi-fi argument for everything is just to each his own. So many people. Like my 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 older brother Mike he swears he's like. Oh, you you don't have your Spotify set to highest quality. I can hear the difference between 96 and 128 and 320 and the vinyl and this. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I, like I a, what a studio environment maybe. I I would argue you're it. Not on, like, consumer. I think yeah. I think most environment. most consumers right. As long as it's like, as long as it doesn't sound horrible. It doesn't as long as it doesn't sound like it's coming through a tin can or washed out or any that sort of thing. Um, you know, Bluetooth is, is lossy compression, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Um, does the, does the Porsche have any particular good sound system? It does. I mean, it's okay. But the thing is, it, for years, I wouldn't play music in the car because the wanna... engine sounded so wow. good. <laughs> right? Wow. Yeah. When you're. You know, if you're lucky enough to have a Ferrari, it's just like, you know, it's like the engine music is what they can say. We, can we uh, scratch a little bit below the surface there? Um, Ferrari models? Ah, 
So uh, the first one I had was a, a 2006 um, uh, F430 uh, with a six-speed. So that was pretty. That's pretty red. Good. Black. Mm. Black, wow, Ken black, Kashenda black, and a black, black Ferrari. Black exterior, black interior. Was pretty, Ooh, yeah. It was, it, was, it was pretty nice. This, this was could, in your Apple days? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. See, the funny thing about that car, though, is that you can't see out of the back of it. You know, I mean, it's just the visibility is just so poor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the kind of the strategy <laughs> for changing lanes in the highway is you just down stiff and you, the downshift and you nail it <laughs> because wow. you can see in front of you. <laughs> wow. And you figure that if you nail it in that car, you know, nobody is going to be able to, you know, kind of catch you. When you're saying you're, you're downshifting. Yeah. So to... you're, you're going, you're in the, you know, so you're, you're going down the highway. Uh, you're, you know, you're in fifth. So you downshift to fourth and you nail it. What does that mean? Like you, you're accelerating, accelerating. by downshifting. Yeah, yeah you, you downshift and because and then, then it, it makes the it pops the RPMs. Yeah, well, it's just the, the you're going to be able to get through the revs more quickly. Wow. So I, yeah, I've I've never driven a stick car on the highway, let alone on any road except for a tiny parking lot, which I gave up after about six minutes. So you downshift, yeah. and that's what sends you. Well, it's like if you if you then you know nail the you know the the accelerator pedal yeah you're going to be building revs more quickly the lowered number gear because in my in. head you're accelerating <laughs> right yeah, that's, 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 just like that yeah but you're saying you're downshifting <laughs> yeah you're going from like fifth to fourth or from fourth to third yeah and and you're going to build revs more quickly so you may if you want to like accelerate fast you go to a lowered numbered gear and you nail it and you get to the, you know, the top of the rev range and then maybe you, you know, upshift. I see. Again. I see. Right. Okay. So the Ferrari, so that the was 2000, the 2006 Ferrari at 430. That was then, the first Ferrari. Yeah. And then I had a, a red uh, 1987 uh, 328 GTS, which is like a... Um, Sort of a half convertible. It has a uh, uh, soft a top. Targa. This was quite a Targa. No, it's not. A, it was not a soft top. Um, it it has. It's it's kind of like a half convertible. It has it had a, a roof panel you could lift out. Mm -hmm. One singular piece. There's one singular like fiberglass. And piece. where the hell do you put that thing? You put it right behind the seats. There was a, it, there was just this very very narrow area right behind the two seater. This is narrow area. It was actually great because in the uh, in the Ferrari uh, in, in, that, in that one, it's actually both of them. There was like room right behind the driver's seat to like stick your bag. So it's about that much space. Was it designed, Ken, deliberately to hold that roof? Um, because there's in the in the Hummer EV, at least, yeah, in both in the pickup truck and in the SUV, the glass panels come off con remember when we were in the, deal, the yeah, dealership yeah, yeah. in new jersey it's similar to that but that that was huge those are huge panels yes but the, there is dis space designed for the those it's yeah, like they it's, stack like pizza boxes this yeah, doesn't not, sound not really. like it's, you now kind of you know just kind of put it plop back it there. back there you okay. know i i think if you were going to go out on a sunny day yep. and you're starting from home yep. you would take the top and just off put it in the leave in the garage in the garage do you prefer to drive with the top down off Exposed. Yeah, I mean, I, except in like the city in in SF. I mean, that's not quite so fun, <laughs> you know. But I get as, that. As soon as you as soon as you cross the, cross the bridge, cross any of the bridges here. Yeah. And the sun's blaring down. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, nice. it's nice. It's it's, nice. it's really nice. Yeah. I mean, on the highway, it's <laughs> it it can be it's it's not great at highway speeds for a long time. Well, you're also you just, creating you're hella buffeted, drag, buffeted right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and yes. There's a lot of wind noise, and so when I'm by uh, myself, it's okay. But if you like, you're in the car you with somebody shouting else, shouting to next to the person next to yeah, you, right? You yeah. Just, yeah. When did you have the McLaren? Oh, um, that would have been probably 2014. After the Ferraris. Oh gosh. Um, yep, I'm really, really so digging that, here. <laughs> uh, yes, that was actually in between the two Ferraris. You went for uh, you did a, a McLaren sandwich, Ferrari sandwich, <laughs> McLaren and, sandwich. Uh, there was a Jaguar in there. Uh, it had a Jaguar F-type very briefly. 
Jaguar F type. Yeah. No, no Aston Martins for you. I've never had an Aston Martin, but I had a Lotus. I haven't mentioned that one. Lotus I had, Elise? I had a Lotus Elise. That was a really nice wow. car. That's one I wish I did. I, I let that one get away and I shouldn't have. Well, guess what, Ken? You could just go to whatever car websites you go to and buy well, one. Know, I actually was thinking when I when I got the <laughs> when I got the Miata, which was in um uh twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, is that right? Um, no, 2021. Um, I, I was thinking like, well, I was like looking at, uh, you know, getting another, another Lotus Elise. Mm-hmm. And then I just went and test drove the Miata. And it's like, it's the closest car that you could get today to a Lotus Elise. The thing about the Elise is that they stopped selling them in the U.S. Mm. around 2006. So it's like, do I want to go and get a like 15, 16, 17-year-old car? Yeah. Well, didn't you do that with the Ferrari? That- yeah. It's like, <laughs> look, buying, <laughs> buying old cars is like, it's not, it's not a practical proposition. Because... So it's like the, the, the first Ferrari I had, mm-hmm. the, the, the F430, I had it for a year. It was in the shop for a month. Oof. <laughs> Oof. So, and, but, but, Ken, I just want to have the, the audience understand you daily drive these cars. This oh, yeah. isn't this isn't something that sits in your garage that you just look at and admire. Yeah. This is something you get into every single day and drive to work. Yeah, it's like you go get the groceries <laughs> in, your, in your car, you know. It's, kind of, it's just this like silly thing. Yeah, and where the hell do you put those groceries? Yeah, you better not buy too much. <laughs> yeah. Ferrari has the front trunk. So now the Ferrari, the the the, um, the F430 had a front trunk which was yeah. um, really deep. Uh, um, mm-hmm. My, my son uh, uh, was going to elementary school at the time, and he had, gosh, what was the name of these, um, these, uh, uh, these bags that, would, uh, that were on wheels that you would have, you know, lift up a handle and you'd drag them, mm-hmm. uh, and then they had this um, metal uh, uh, frame around them so you could actually like, use it as a, a stool. You could sit on it, and then you could zipper it open, and oh, gosh, I forget what they call those things. Uh, but it was, and because it had this uh, metal frame around it, it was like this, this, this nugget, you know, this, this sort of tall cube. But it went right in the front of the Ferrari. So I would yeah. pull around, you know, to the school. And then uh, get out of the car, open up the front trunk, take his bag out. Uh, you know, it's cinema is, you know. So bike, you bike were bike. you were that dad driving that, your that, son that, that that to dad, elementary that, school. It was probably hugely embarrassing for him. In yeah. a Ferrari. Yeah. Wow. When was the uh, Mercedes? Uh, that was during the pandemic. So I had that car. Uh, and, you know, it's like the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, it uh, It's like we just weren't really going anywhere. Yeah. On the, pulling up at, at home. How do you decide when you're sort of finished with a car? Is it just a feeling? <laughs> Ridiculously fickle thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah. I guess it might be, I mean, not that I'm comparing shoes to a car, but I'll just do it for the sake of the argument. Um, Cause you don't have all of these cars at once. I you had have, at one time, a dirty little secret when I was working at Apple, you could kind of just park cars in the, you know, the garage underneath mm-hmm. the Infinite Loop campus. Mm-hmm. And as long as you moved it every now and again, um, you could store cars there. And so at, at, at the most I had at one time was I had four cars. Oh, okay. List them. Oh, so <laughs> probably at that time, uh, I had uh, uh, the red Ferrari, so the 328. I had... Uh, 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 a Porsche Boxster, nice. which I have in uh, Boxster Spider. That was a nice car. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, oh gosh, I probably had a, a 1987 red 911. So I had two, 19, two red 1987 cars at once. And a, would, I forget. <laughs> oh my God. And now you have one. Just one car, yeah. What is Once your... I left Apple, I divested, you know, mm-hmm. the, what does the your, cars. what does your wife drive? Uh, she has a Mercedes SUV. She thinks I'm crazy. She's a, like a very practical mm. person. Uh, she doesn't. But the, the have... Porsche is yours. Yes. So that is the car that you take on a daily basis to That's work. That's right. That's right. My, my wife is just wonderfully practical. She's very even tempered and. She just doesn't 
um, yeah, have these sort of like odd flights of fancy. <laughs> But she likes to go for a ride. Impractical, impractical you, things. Right? She likes to drive, but oh, it's okay. just not interested in fast cars. Yeah. You know, it's she. The way she explains it is that, like, when she got her driver's license, uh, you, you know, when she was seventeen or you know, sixteen or seventeen or eighteen, you know, probably like sixteen, because she was living in Ohio at the time, mm -hmm. so probably pretty young. It was just like, that's it. Now I, I'm free. I can go wherever I want. Yeah. And that's what she likes. And it doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't there, really matter what the car is. Why? What, what about cars can, for you, gets you, you know, feeling... It's, 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 the, inner, it's the inner eight-year-old. That's it. It's just, I, I just, I, it's, it's... What, to, to be in the yeah, cockpit in of a, this... Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, that's, that's it. Yeah, that's... Which is why I'm going to assume that electric cars don't appeal to you. I've only ever driven an electric car once. So, um, so my, I'd say my wife is very, very practical, but she, uh, she's, she's also very nice to me. And so years ago when we were living in San Jose, uh, two years in a row, uh, we, uh, she, for my birthday, which is in the middle of the summer, she uh, got me, uh, the gift was a, a day out with this uh, company, what was they call it, Club Sportiva, I don't know if they're One still. of those, you get to so drive do, an exotic car. You, yeah. So they, you, they, 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 they gang you up with like five other groups, uh, five, like five other individuals or couples, mm -hmm. and you go out in six cars, and they have a route uh, around Skyline Drive and then out. Oh, it's not on a track. It's you no, get no, no, to no, no, no. take the, the cars public, on the it's road. On the public road. So you mm. get they pick out six cars and you they they have six stops along the way. And so you you know get in one car and you drive to the next place. You get out. You get on the next one. Get out of the next one. You have lunch and then you you know so on so on. So uh, so I got that's the first time that I drove the McLaren and I liked it so much that I bought one. Which one? Seven twenty. Uh, it that was the twelve C. So this was. 10 years ago. And you had a McLaren after the Ferraris? After the first Ferrari, yeah. So then it was a McLaren, or it was a Ferrari sandwich. Yeah. Right? The, you bookended the, the Ferraris. You went back to Ferrari. Why? Yeah. Um, I don't, there's just something so, uh, it, it it appeals to the you know again kind of like the you know the inner child just the mystique the 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 the, the love the the of of the that they put into the cars that you know Enzo Ferrari founded this company to build racing cars and then build road cars and just the I don't know the the feeling that it gives you to have that object be a part of your life it seems like it is very much tied to the like literal rumble you know that that a car that a car like that gives you yeah, versus see, see, an electric the car is, there's no sort of like yeah uh, haptic feedback yeah, see, oh see. you just you just feel it versus like feel it on your insides yeah, 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 yeah. you know yeah, and you hear nothing when you're driving an electric yeah, car it, it's it's you know i you know, I, I, I think, you know, that for me, I, I actually don't like the aspect of it when you're driving a car like that, that you're very noticeable. I mean, it's part of the thing that I like about my car now is, that, again, if I get to have the enjoyment of having this wonderful vehicle mm -hmm. that these incredible designers and engineers put together and that it doesn't, it doesn't really call that much attention to it. It's, just, it's white. It's not a flashy color. Uh, but it you know, still gives and, you that thrill. But yes, it still does. And and you know you drive around you know, down the road in a you know a, a vintage <laughs> <laughs> red Ferrari. You uh, you can't really help but call attention to yourself. And that's an aspect of it that I never enjoyed. Do you think cars are continuing? I mean, this might be, be a silly question. Do you think cars are continuing? to get better or oh, yeah. they don't make them like they used to. Does that apply? Well, you know, in a way, it, it, cars are absolutely better. The quality uh, of, of, the, of the engineering, they're, they're so much safer. Uh, the, the fuel Material uh, efficiency, and... which, you know, paradoxically <laughs> has been turned into 
more horsepower rather than more miles per gallon. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, just in every way, cars are objectively better today than they were in the past, for sure. And a, a 2024 Ferrari, whatever the hell, doesn't does, does it appeal to you? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to have one. But you've gone, when you've got these Ferraris, you go backwards in time. You don't get current models. Why? Yeah, well... Um, more accessible? Once, uh, uh, more accessible financially. Sure, sure. That's certainly sure. one thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, part of it is, you know, just wanting to, like, have the thing that you couldn't have when you were a kid. Mm. That's part of it. It's like you look at that thing, it sort of fixes in your mind the image of the thing that you wish yeah. you could have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. For me, that's the uh, the Lamborghini Diablo, <laughs> like a purple Lamborghini no, no, that, Diablo. There's a practical car. Because, <laughs> because in those music videos, those rap music videos, yeah. the, the big timers. If anyone remembers that that group, um, the big timers from the '90s, I they would just rent these, or, or they would just do. Uh, burnouts, circular donuts yeah. with the doors open in these rap videos. And as a seven-year-old, I'm just like, that is the coolest thing that's I've ever cool, seen, that, that you know? The, yeah, and they had, they had yeah. the, uh, the Rolls Royces with the, um, the suicide doors, you know? And as a kid, you're just like, that is so cool. Yeah. And I would argue, as an adult, still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. But look, it's like all these cars, you know, kind of going on about it. It's like I, there is absolutely, I will make absolutely no argument that it makes sense or is practical <laughs> or is it's, it's or it recommended. Sure. <laughs> right? It's, it's um, yeah, it's, have it's you gotten, an, indu uh, an indulgence. Have you gotten any uh, sort of the friendly like nods from fellow Porsche drivers on the road? Yeah, sometimes. sometimes. You know, again, I mean, that's, but that's, I, it's like, it's it's easy to do these cars and coffee things and whatever. <laughs> I you know I don't, I don't do that as you know quite so much. Number one, I'm an introvert, so it's mm -hmm. you know and and it's it's not a thing. I'm not trying to brag. I just love the machines. Yes, 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 yes. There is definitely uh, this camaraderie amongst the electric, you know, last mile mobility crew of people. When I'm on boosted or the bike or whatever sort of vehicle, and there's someone wearing a full face helmet, and you're sort of coming at each other, and you just give each other the nod, sure. you know. Sure. Does that happen when you're driving these and any of the um, cars? Yeah, not in the car that I have now. Not so much because again, it flies through, uh, under yeah, the radar. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, flashier, the red Ferrari, the, the flashier ones, yeah. Yeah, it does. I tell you, though, if, and not if, but when Porsche comes out with an electric 911, uh, that's, that's a car that I would be interested in. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. What was when it's really, when they come out with one that they fully electric, put not, the yeah, yeah. 911 badge on. So not the Taycan. Or yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting to me, but I'm not interested in four-door cars. There are, the, so the Porsche's two seats. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's two plus two. So there are, there are two small seats in the back. So if we, if you needed to, you can kind of cram an adult Oof. back there and, you know, you can be sitting with your, you know, your knees up by your, your chest or whatever. But there's a lot of room inside, but yeah, not really. It's a two plus two. It's, it's, two it's, plus it's two. so it's not a four seater, Ken. It's yeah, a no. two plus two. That's right. And you got to put the seat down and try to, you know, if you're an adult, you can kind of, you know, jam yourself back there. It's great for, like, kids. Kids in a car seat. Yeah, but not for full-size adults. Yeah, what was, you wouldn't want to go on a What was the electric trip. car you drove? Oh, that was during the, um, the time that, uh, that we, we went on this, you know, exotic car day. Uh, and they had a, a Tesla, a Tesla Model S. Do you remember the configuration? Oh, like I said, it was this, this close to 10 years ago. So, so ooh, probably it, it like a P85 plus. Some, some, or... Something like that. Something like that. Might have been a P100. You know what we should do, Ken? Yeah. It's on some weekend, go to a, a Tesla showroom. Yeah, go and do a test drive. With the Plaid. Yeah. I want to be there when you experience. See, I did. The... Okay. So, so now I, I interviewed at Tesla because uh, uh, an old colleague it's actually, I knew two, uh, two people uh, through two different means. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the good friend of mine uh, who introduced me to my book editor uh, also introduced me to this fellow who's working at Tesla. And then I also uh, had the connection to Boss Ording, who I worked with at Apple, 
uh, also did a stint at Tesla. Um, this is maybe like uh, you know eight or nine years ago now, and so I went over and and. An interview was kind of an exploratory conversation sure. about whether I was going to come and, and join them. Sure. And, uh, and, and so they took me out in a car. And they had um, um, a one with, you know, this like, you know, crazy, what do they call it? Uh, Ludicrous uh, mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were on the, uh, the back streets there in, um, you know, in South Bay. You know, around that, what is like the Palo Alto, Menlo Park, to, you know, type thing. And so we're just we're on some some back roads where there's there's nobody, and um, I'm in the front seat, and uh, this 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 other fellow just says, "Okay, I'm, I'm are you ready? It's like, get yourself ready because I'm going to nail it." And it's like it doesn't feel good. It like, you know, <laughs> the acceleration is so quick that like. Your 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 internal organs just just don't have like just get smushed, you know. Your your brain sloshes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just it's like not good acceleration. It's like, yeah, okay, please don't do that again. Once is enough for this trip. So a bad first experience. Well, well, I will I will argue that it is fundamentally different being in the driver's seat versus mm -hmm. you have no control when you're in the yeah. passenger seat. He's, they say, Oh, we're going to go. Uh, I would love to, I would love to sit in the passenger seat. <laughs> you're, you're holding the, uh, what the, what do they call it? Stop. The yoke, the yoke. The yoke. Oh yeah, yeah. The little rocket ship controller. I mean, uh, on paper it's zero to 60 and Two seconds yeah, flat. Yeah, that's really fast. That's really fast. That's really fast. Yeah. And there's you can, no. You can hurt yourself. Yeah, you better be like. Be, be and there's facing no noise. Ken. Yeah, there's no noise. Yeah. It's almost. It's almost sort of like. It, it's uncanny to to, yeah, to a degree. Yeah, you have just like a little bit of little bit of wheel noise. Yeah, that's and about that's, it. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just tire, about tire it's, noise. it's not just about going fast. It's, not it's about it's about experiencing feeling the gearbox. Yeah, it's about feeling the, on on your insides, not just with your well, ears, see, but part, feeling see, the. Part of this, let me let me try to really like get to this. Is that you know I I spend I've spent my life and career uh, trying to design and 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 engineer and and produce products, right? And uh, there you know in you get into uh, a car like the one that I have now this Porsche 911 it's like there are people just like me who put their heart and soul into making this product and you can experience that that's what I'm interested in experiencing it's, but you could still get that with a Tesla sure okay but you know but then <laughs> but but then it's it's kind of that uh, there's also this this whole sort of sensory Yes. Environment yes. that you're in. And that it's not only the engine noise, but it's the transmission noise. And then it's the tactile feel of actually changing gears and, you know, and going through the rev range in this motor. Um, it's the whole, it's the whole thing. And, and it's this, like, you've got three pedals and you're, you know, you're working all three pedals. Right. And with this, the, the, the silent motors. Yeah. Cause Teslas don't have engines. It is, it is counterintuitive to what we know as human beings with an internal combustion engine car. Yeah, well, you, I grew up with right. internal combustion engines, right, right. and uh, it's... And it's what you couldn't have. Yeah, and it's what I couldn't, and now you can what have. I couldn't I have. Now you can have. Now you can. Now, uh, now, now I'm, I'm a grown-up, and I still get to act like a kid. <laughs> well, what comes next, Ken? What comes next? After the Porsche. I don't know. I'm really enjoying the Porsche. I think it's the best car I've had. What? Wow. Yeah, I think it's the best car. Yeah, it's really, it's really great. What it's, makes it better than a Ferrari? Um, well, like I said, it's uh, like there, there's that negative aspect of having the Ferrari that it's very flashy mm. and draws it draws mm. a lot of attention mm. to it. Because a Ferrari is a Ferrari. Yeah, you know, and and like people would you look at you in that car and they make a judgment about. <laughs> you're right. No, say, what, you're they'd right. say that right. guy in a Ferrari. Who's that guy? Who's yeah, that guy? Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's this you know, it's this you know, middle-aged white guy thing. You know, you know, who does he think he is? Oh, he's some he's some tech bro, right? Or some I don't know. You know well, right? well, Porsche, if you're listening, you got yeah, you, you, uh, you got it. You got an electric. Yeah, an electric curious person here. Have you test drove the the Taycan? Taycan? No, 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 I haven't. No, no interest in a four door. Um, no, no, no interest in a four door car. No, no, no. 
yeah. because it's usually you by yourself I, or driving by to myself work. When I, when I commute, you know, the funny thing is that when my wife and I go someplace, I, she likes to drive and I like to look out the window. So she drives most of the time when we go places together. Um, changing gears here, Ken. Uh, yeah. It's, it's 942. We're, we're yeah. way... Oh, that, that time, 942, oh, oh, right? Yeah. 941 and 942. That's right. Right? So it's a, it's a, we would be doing a product reveal now. Yep. Not yep. today, though. <laughs> <laughs> where, where I, I want to just sort of zoom out a little bit. Um, where, where, do you, where do you find inspiration? Where, 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 how, why are you drawn to some of the things that you're drawn to? Is it something that you're born with? Or is it something, I'm asking you in particular, or is it something that's sort of a product in your envi of your environment? Well, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, I, I get inspiration from my fellow humans. I love my fellow humans, you know? And you know, I have some skills with design and technology, and it's, that's what I can do for the, for, for humanity, you know, for, for, for everyone else. Uh, and so, uh, you know, and yet, you know, I'm an introvert. And, and so, but that doesn't mean that I don't have feelings for, you know, for, you know, other, other people. Uh, and I want to make the world a better place. So how can I do that? Well, it's like, you know, now you begin to see how that can, can create a, a, a narrative, a, you know, a direction to go in. And so, uh, I, I have really en endless interest in uh, doing creative and technical work. I can do that all day, every day. And so that's, you know, I, it's, it took me a long time to figure that, you know, figure out this sort of alchemy <clears throat> of how to do work, the environment to put myself in a company like Humane. Uh, in the past company like Apple, the way that it was then, and to work on these, you know, these products uh, and, and to try to make them as, as, as good as I can and then, um, you know, make them, make them available for other people. But where, where does that come from? It, it sounds like it's just who you are. Well, you know, yeah, but it's, it's also the, the idea to do things that are new. I mean, we, you know, we talk about it, you know, jokingly, it's that, you know, you want the things that you could have when you were a kid, and there's absolutely something to that, that you know, no matter, you know, I, you know, I'm a child in the 1970s. I, it's, I can't help that. That's when I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, there, there's some you know, some opinions, uh, uh, you just got fixed at that time. Mm -hmm. And so, I think that's true for all of us. You, you have an age when you are most impressionable. And, Which is and, childhood. Yeah, right? and, yeah, and some things just get, get fixed. And so, I, I also try, uh, as, as, as much as I can, to, uh, to not repeat myself, to not, to, you know, to try to stay up on what's new and, and to, challenge myself to uh, create new products that aren't like old products, just aren't some recapitulation of things that have already been figured out. Just go figure out some new stuff. And uh, that's hard. It's very hard. And, and it's, uh, it, you always feel like you're skating on thin ice. It's like you're skating on thin ice on one skate, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're trying to keep balance, and you're trying not to fall through the ice, and you're, like, uh, trying to, uh, like, keep yourself going um, coherently forward in, you know, in one direction toward a specific goal of shipping a product, you know, that's going to be great by a certain date within all the, you know, uh, you know, technical and, you know, business constraints that there are, and it's hard, but that's... That's what makes it interesting, right? It's uh, it's 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 what you know makes it you know fun and interesting to get up every day. If you think yeah, back to if you think back to your when you first joined Apple, was the drive still the same for you to to make products and yeah, you know because yeah, there was I, at one point you were a you know a photographer of sure, sorts, you know sure. I, it, it took me a long time to figure all this out mm -hmm. for me. 
to, to be able to explain what I just did in the previous couple of minutes, yep. it took me a long time to figure that out. And uh, my experience at Apple and being exposed to uh, the culture uh, of all the people who were there mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the culture as it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, as it followed the vision, mm -hmm. as it tried to reach, uh, uh, achieve the, the kind of the, the, the vision set forth by Steve himself. And I learned a lot from that. Uh, I, you know, I, I, and I interacted with him personally only a very, very few times, but that made a huge, made a huge impression on me. Every time that I got to spend these, these precious few minutes with him, showing him work and seeing his reaction directly, uh, it made just made a huge impression on me, and and so it's like try to distill from those experiences, and then of course the the much more um, uh, uh, common you know everyday experiences of of interacting with uh, folks like Imran and since Bethany, uh, who of course founded Humane. I, I knew Patrick only a little bit uh, uh, when I was at Apple. Uh, but didn't really get to work with him until it came to Humane. But people like that, um, and just learning from what, everything that we do here at Humane is about collaboration. It's all about collaboration, and it's all about conversations. And so how is it that I can just sit down here and we can have this conversation? It seems very, very easy. It's like because... I practice at this all day, every day. When this live stream ends, I'm gonna go and find some people and I'm gonna have more conversations about what the product is, what the ideas are, what are we gonna do? Let's look at the latest demo. Let's figure out what's good about it, what you know, needs to be improved, and do that both at a very, very high level and then both at a very, also at a very, very detailed level, very, very that down to the smallest little detail. Um, but then also bring it back up and, and try to understand. It's like, well, how does this puzzle piece that we're talking about right now fit into the overall picture that we're trying to make? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we have this beautiful, well-crafted, perfectly honed piece that's for a different picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe we just need to take that one out and maybe we'll make a different picture some other day. And so you have this, this give and take of uh, conversations and evaluations and, you know, trying to understand and integrate new information and all pointed toward trying to make the best product that we can. So that's, that's it. So it sounds like <clears throat> it's a combination of your environment, but then also that helps further the drive. Yeah, I mean, look, it's fun. Right, that's what I say to Colin all the time. It is fun. It's fun. But it's, I think it's important. Yeah, like, but, but it's, it's, it's an enriching fun. It's, 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 uh, it's a challenging yes. fun. Yes, uh, it's, yes. It's like, you know, if, if I were more of an you know, outdoorsy type person, it would be like climbing a mountain fun. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. eating a bowl of candy fun, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it, there's different, right? I mean, that, that's, that's as clear as I can make it. Yeah. There's, there's a, um, a, you know, a self-indulgent fun, you know, which is driving fast cars, right? Uh, that, that's, it, there's, there's no way that I can really explain it or justify it. It's just, it's just candy, right? But then there's the, and, and it's unserious, but then... You know, after I do the commute and I park the car and I get out and I walk to the office, then it's the serious fun. It's the, the, the difficult, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's really what makes, um, you know, the, the, the day really worth it. And, you know, and it's, you know, it's part of that is, you know, as an introvert, I find that coming and doing this all day is very, very intense. I, I, you know, in some ways it's difficult. It's difficult to come out and, uh, and interact with other people and, and to just outlay all of this energy all of the time. It's 
wonderfully engaging, but it's also fantastically exhausting mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I need to get back in that car and kind of get into some mm -hmm. like isolated zone mm -hmm. here. And that's how I reach out, go home. And I just caught up on, um, of course my wife's out of town uh, these, these last days. So I finally caught up on the, um, and got the, saw the last episode last of the Star Trek Strange New Worlds. You know, I, Star Trek, because I'm again, child of the 70s. Mm -hmm. So I grew up on Star Trek reruns. And, uh, it's, you know, it's great, you know, to watch the, watch the program and it's like, then go to bed. And it's just like, I don't like toss and turn. By the time I turn the light out, it's just like, I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. Boom, I can just go right to sleep. And wake up in the next day and do the whole thing again. Can we talk about your, uh, the way you um, collect information? You'd mentioned the other day that you read Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's like Wikipedia is uh, is a huge hobby for me. That's uh, and and reading reference books has always been um, a very big. What is a hobby. reference book, Ken? Uh, like a it, like it an it instruction depends. manual I mean, the, or yeah, the, uh, yeah, the encyclopedia, like literally the encyclopedia, the dictionary. Uh, one of my favorite reference books when I was growing up, because I was a huge fan of baseball, was baseball encyclopedia. So I had this book, you know, this big thick book, um, and just page through the book and like looking at the statistics and you know, fixing, you know, in my mind that Mel Ott had 511 career homers, you know. Is um, this fun for you? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, yeah, because it's like this stuff that you can, you can learn, right? So you can, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, a, you know, obsess over these, you know, these little details, like Mickey Mantle's 536 homers, you know. You know. Is it, is it, because you grew up reading physical books? Yeah. Right, because the, I, I am not a child of the internet. Right. Yeah, that, now our access to information has been completely yeah, democratized. Yeah, so now it's just Wikipedia. It's just like one of the things I love doing on Wikipedia is uh, like you go and uh, like go and look at the presidents of the United States. And of course, what they do is then like you know predecessor, successor. So you could just oh, it's like it, you know talk about just like eating candy. It's like oh, I can <laughs> I can click these links. I can click the links. So who's the next person? Who's the next person? Who's the next person? Uh, who's the previous person? Who's the previous person? You know, is there any the is there any particular topic you like to sort of dive into? Is it you know is it a, is it is the way you stay up to date with current events and news through Wikipedia? Well, a, a lot of it is just uh, history. I, history. I, I, that, that was my major in college. I didn't major in technology in college. I majored in history. So that's the only actual degree after high school. I don't have <laughs> You are literally degree. qualified to speak about history. That's right. Well, that's, also, that's I would say your time like, at Apple so maybe helped you much, a Much bit more there. qualified <laughs> you know, in terms of actual, like, credentials, uh, yeah, to talk about history, history than technology. Are you ever satiated when you go through Wikipedia? No, it's like, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah, no, it's, it's just like yeah, it's endlessly, like, well, endlessly fascinating. I, I, I don't know if it's fair to make this comparison, Colin, but, like, are you ever satiated after you play, you know, f six, seven, eight, nine games of, you no. know? No. Right? Like this weekend, you're going to indulge in Diablo. Yeah. And even after a full day session, you probably want more. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah. Yeah. Which is, I it's guess, different, though. There it's is an different. End Playing, point. There's an end point for video games. There's, never, there's uh, Yeah, there's I guess there's, well, is, it depends on the game yeah. also. Is there an end point for WoW or, or Tarkov? Or? I mean, I would say eventually, yeah. You get to a point where eventually... Well, you're just like, oh, I need a break from this. Like any yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of thing, you know? But then you go from reading, reading Wikipedia to getting in your car to driving, and then you yeah. get home and you spend time with your wife or you watch sure. some, you know... But That's I like the analogy you TV. made with, uh, you know, the eating candy thing, like yeah. the car is candy, yeah. you know, for, for, for you and me, Colin, I guess like riding to and from work, it's, it's fun. It, it is a commute, it is, is a commute, Every but it's fun. Fun. it's fun. It's fun. And here the challenges I would say are, yeah, Ken, they're a different kind of fun. They're a fulfill. It's like a deep, and I, I've said this a million times already, but like, uh, humane, this job that I have right now is is by far the most um, challenging, fulfilling, rewarding environment place that I've ever yeah, worked. Yeah, at. you know, it's uh, infuriating and frustrating. Yeah. And, yeah, right. I mean, uh, to to do what we're doing here is 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 not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Um, 
But there's definitely, uh, I find joy in coming here and, and getting to work with people like you and, and the entire team here. Um, but I think it's important to, you know, in sort of whatever, whatever work you're doing to find joy in, in as, you know, taxing as it is to, you know, do the things that we're doing to, to be in an office, to be a, an extrovert of sorts, you know, for people like you. Um, I think it's important to, to be able to find joy in the things that you're well, doing. It's, I, I, you know, you know, not to be like, you know, morbid or anything, but it's like, look, our time is limited. Yes, it is. Ken. Right. So yes, it is. Uh, it's a, there's a, there's, there's, there's a, a finite, there's a finite number of days. And, it, and I, try to spend each one in the best way that yep. I can. Yep. Me too. And, and again, it's, it's getting back to this fundamental point is, is that it's not only for myself, but it's to try to make the world a better place, to try to create a product that we can put out in the world that will bring joy to people mm -hmm. that, you know, that people that, you know, technology has so much potential to make our lives better. And I, I, I think that maybe in the last 10 years or a dozen years, uh, the, that aspect of technology has, uh, no, we, we haven't delivered on that as a, as a, a technology industry. Uh, and I think that part of the effort that, we're, we're, that I see that we're trying to make here at Humane is to bring back some of the excitement, mm -hmm. the childlike en enthusiasm about mm -hmm. a product, mm -hmm. that you can take this product that we're making and you're going to bring it into your life and it's going to be a net positive. It's going to make your life better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just sounds like this ridiculously over-optimistic, naive thing, but that yeah, I, I, I really, I really hope that mm -hmm. that that you know, with the potential that AI has, uh, you know, uh, sure, uh, as with any powerful new thing, there is a potential for good and there's a potential for not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that, you know, it's it's, you know, I take it as my responsibility to try to figure out what good can be done with it, and and to try to share that out with the world and just show the example of here is how this incredible new technology can be used, employed, packaged, productized in such a way that people who are not, you know, gadget freaks and are not nerds and are not following, you know, reading every, you know, tech blogs and, you know, and, 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 you know, and wondering when is the next, you know, you know, cool new thing coming out. But that people who are, you know, there's doctors and teachers mm -hmm. and, you know, is people who are, you know, the, the, you know, lawyers or, you know, the, whatever, you know, doing whatever job they have mm -hmm. are going to look at our product and say, oh, that's how AI is going to make a difference for me. I get it. I get how I've heard about all this hype and now okay, I get it. Some people actually went and thought through how that's going to mean something for me. And, and people are going to take that and bring that into, you know, our product and make it a part of their lives. That's, to me, that's, that's the potential that we're, we're aiming for. That's the vision that we're aiming for. Ken, as someone that has been working in technology, you've seen this space evolve, like, ridiculously in the last 30, 40 years my perspective is is quite different i want to know from from your point of view um has technology i mean i th my answer is yes but it feels like technology now has gone completely mainstream in the sense that when i was in high school i don't think the the whole world was as sort of technologically proficient as we are now, but I'd be curious to hear what you think because you grew up before the internet was in homes. You know, uh, I think the answer is yes, but I, I'd be curious to hear what you say. Yeah, well, we, like everybody has so many computers now 
Uh, it's like if you have a car, there's, you know, there's a little, there's a little CPU running your anti-lock brakes, right? We didn't have anti-lock brakes when I was, you know, the youngest kid. So it's just like, well, you know, here we are. It's like, you know, here we are sitting around on this little setup that we have. It's like just within reach. How many wow, computers you're so are there? Right. Right. One, it's just two, everything. three, four. Wow. One over here. Wow. There's two over here. That here. is. Right. That is and it's a, like yeah. so. My, yeah. yeah. It's 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 a digital world. We don't, we don't even think about it. Uh, so wow. it's yeah. It's just completely because now completely technology pervasive. is completely embedded in our lives. Sure. You have you have kids that are born in twenty. 2002, 2012, even 2020, yeah. they're growing up using a tablet computer, That's you know, right. iPad babies, yeah. kids playing Technology Fortnite on a, on a, and they don't know a world without this stuff. Yeah, yeah it's amazing, isn't it? It's, cr it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, you know, but, you know, it's, I, I think it's a good kind of crazy because one yes. of the best f phrases that, uh, best concepts that has inspired me goes back to a fellow named Douglas Engelbart, the uh, uh, inventor of um, the computer mouse is what he's most famous for. That would is something uh, uh, that I, I know. He was he Xerox? Very, very frustrating. No, no, no. no. This no, he, else. he was an independent researcher um, and uh, he was associated with uh, Palo Alto Research Center um, and um, uh, the the um, uh, you know uh, no that's no but because that's park um, yeah I'm I'm confusing some things so let's just skip forward to the things that I do know <laughs> so he had this uh, independent research project where he the 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 key concept was augmenting human intellect that is the phrase augmenting human intellect All right so what could you do. If you go and you go, go to YouTube, if you're interested in this topic at all, go to YouTube. Freddie, hey, hi. Uh, go to YouTube and type in mother of all demos. Whoa. Mother of all demos. What is and it, And you Ken? will get this demo that Douglas Engelbart did showing his online computer system. So he, in, in like December 1968, went and did this demo that introduced... The mouse, Dis like display like, text editing, oh, a wow. diagramming system, wow. regular expression searches, uh, video conferencing. He had multiple document editing, so two mice on the screen editing Whoa. the same document at once. This is all. This is all what year? 1968. Oh my god! This is amazing. And it took. 20, we are still years. we are still not completely wow. caught up, and the, one of the things that really made it possible is that this was a time sharing computer. So those two people were logged into the same computer, so it wasn't a distributed computing problem. And obviously, wow. we you know we, we came and we we made the internet, and now you know there's lots of computers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, everybody has their own computer rather than having everybody on one computer. Oh, uh, interesting. And, and so wow, that, that made it concept. technologically possible. But it's just like, go look at that demo. And, and even, you know, in the first couple of minutes, he describes his thesis of, you know, augmenting human intellect. How, what could you do if you had a computer that was there alive for you? All day, every day. What benefit wow. could you derive from that? Wow! And, and he was saying this when the, the computers were uh, still like, like the you, size you, of rooms. Size of rooms. And now, Ken, now, <clears throat> Ken, we cannot live without these computers. Yeah, yeah. You if can't, I were you to can't ask, do all your stuff if without I were computers. To ask anyone here in the chat, my friends, I'm gonna just take your phone. I'm just gonna take your phone. At what point, at what point do you start freaking out? Yeah. yeah it's, it's pretty nuts. It's pretty, pretty soon. And it, and, it, and it wasn't even so long ago. Like, I remember, I'm only 33, 32. I remember a time where you didn't have a phone. It's like when I moved to California in 1999, my wife and I were, you know, trying to find a place to live, and we were driving around the neighborhoods, Los Altos, Palo Alto, and South Bay, with 
quarters in our pockets looking for pay phones at gas stations so that we could arrange this next real estate, wow. you, know, uh, 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 you know, house, apartment that we were looking at. It, it's like... Yeah, and that wasn't even so it's long just not, ago. Not so long and that ago. juxtaposition of how pervasive technology is our is in our lives now, and then how sort of like far back 1968, you said he what was the gentleman's name? Douglas Engelbart. Mr. Douglas envisioned this future, and it's like, yeah, we're we're getting there. We're, you know, we're, 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 we're still getting there. We're getting there. I want to close with, I know because we're over time um, and we have this like farmer's market thing across the street. Um, you said it, it, what was the human intellect? What was the-, the Augmenting f- human intellect. I think what Steve Jobs said, um, I don't want to butcher the phrase, but he said like the, the Macintosh is like a bicycle for the mind. Yeah. So where, where that comes from is that Steve found this study that someone did about I watched this video uh, the other day about uh, uh, about animal locomotion. Yep. Right. Who? What animals are the most efficient in in how they move? But without an object that enables them right. to move, right? Because yes. without it, humans are like it's middle of the road, <laughs> yeah. right? So, you know, you, you know, elephants are maybe you know kind of down low, but you know, you got like you know cheetahs and you know condors Gazelles, yeah. and yeah like you know these you know it's the animals that can run fast or that can fly and yeah uh it, but if you give the human a bicycle we shoot up right to the top of the list in terms of efficiency of locomotion yeah. right and right so computers do that for our intellects for our how we can manipulate information uh how we can just ratchet up what we can think about, the amount of information that we can handle and process at one time, the number of things that we can reach out and integrate into our current moment and then process and then share back out. And, you know, look, here we are. We're on the live stream. It's like we're using the computers. We're, like, talking to people. We're sitting here at the Humane Building. We got, mm-hmm. you know, some mm-hmm. gear around us, and we're sharing this, you know, this amazing you know, using this amazing technology to kind of share out our thoughts and words. And, and this was, again, going back to Douglas, 1968. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. that It's like, go, it's an hour and a half, but it's really, like you can I, get I a bunch out of the really first 15 or 20 this. minutes. It's pretty amazing. If any of the mods want to paste it in the chat for the people watching. Yeah, mother of all demos. Just go search mother YouTube, you'll get that. all demos. Um... And I to just, get the whole thing, it's an hour and a half. So make sure you get that version if you want to get it. I am an advocate for uh, 2X here. When I see a video that's an hour long, I say, I can consume that in half of the time, thanks to the technology that we have. Yeah. Um, thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Um, we've gone 10 minutes over. I mean, Ken, I can sit here for six hours. Yeah, we hours can talk and, a long time, but I probably need to get to the next day, yeah, so do you. Yeah, uh, me too. Um, Sue Hunt, Mom, Becca... Our end, everyone, Rory, Allen, to the to the familiar faces that I see, and to the to the new people that are uh, are watching here. If you haven't commented, I see you. Um, so thank you for tuning in. Happy Friday, um, mother of all demos. <laughs> we'll put we'll post it in Discord. Um, I think if you have any interest in technology at all, if you're a human being on planet Earth <laughs> in 2023, and it, you like computers even a and little, you, uh, uh, you're uh, right, right. Go, go which, watch the which first I would imagine the, it's, a, it's a large group of people. Um, Colin and I will be streaming from New York next week. Yep. Yep. We're doing it again. Um, cause, that, cause Colin has some things to take care of in New York. I don't want to blow up your spot here. Um, we can, we can, after it happens, Colin, we can maybe, you know, tell the we'll stream talk about it on, on the sure. Stream. Um, and then it's for me, it's Passover. So I'll be spending time with my family in New Jersey. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we'll be back next week. Um, Ken, anything you want to sort of end with? Plug, go buy Ken's book, uh, Creative no, Selection. No, 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 plug. It's, uh, the plug <laughs> is to thank everybody for, uh, for tuning in. I, I hope you uh, enjoyed our, uh, our rants and raves. I uh, did. Come straight from the heart. Yes, and uh, thanks, yes. thanks for tuning in. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.